All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do uh, hypothesis testing for two variances. So here we go. So we're going to make an inference, right? An educated guess. Uh, sigma 1 squared, sigma 2 squared. So we got two groups here, uh, and we don't know the variances for these two groups. Um, and we'd like to try to make an educated guess about what's going on with them. So we'll take a sample, of course. We'll look at S1 and S2, which are the standard deviations, or S1 squared and S2 squared, the sample variances. All right. Um, hypothesis test, same eight steps as always, uh, just steps three, four, and five, the conditions, the distribution, and the test statistic uh, change. But otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same old stuff in terms of hypothesis tests. Now, um, if we have two groups, well, either the variance is um, they're equal and therefore, whoops, there we go. Variances are equal and therefore alternative would be not equal. Or one group is less than the other or one group is greater than the other. All right. So that's what it would look like. Um, but StatCrunch always uses variance. So we will always use variance uh, in our null alternative hypothesis. Though we can test a standard deviation, standard deviation as well. Testing the standard deviation is just like testing variance. No difference, really. All right. Conditions. Of course, each sample must be randomly selected from a normal or approximately normal population. Uh, we have two groups now, and so those groups need to be independent of each other. Uh, for example, like teen smokers and adult smokers, right? Or males and females, or etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, because we have two samples, um, we kind of we, we got two different groups of data so we need a new distribution um, because we have now two different degrees of freedom so a new distribution for us is going to be the F distribution and so the F distribution looks very similar to chi-squared um, but we have two separate degrees of freedom uh, and so degrees of freedom for sub n and sub d and now I'll explain the n and d in a little bit but they're just n1 minus 1 n2 minus 1 for the two samples again uh, f distribution like chi squared uh, it's always skew right and it is not symmetric okay now when we do this um, this is our test statistic and our test statistic is extremely easy it's just S1 squared over S2 squared. So you divide the two variances. However, super important, sample one is always a sample with the larger variance. Okay? And now, here's the reason why. Because this number is larger, when you divide them, F is always going to be bigger than 1. Okay? Because if you take a larger number divided by a smaller number, you're always going to get something larger than 1. You know, For example, if I take 3 divided by 2, that's 1 and a half. If I take uh, 8 divided by 2, that's 4, right? Um, or let's see here, if I take um, uh, 10 divided by 9, uh, that's going to be 1.1 repeating. Okay, that's what I thought. I'm just making check, uh, making sure. Um, but the point is they're always greater than one. All right. Uh, and if, if uh, to make sense of <clears throat> why we want to do this, um, essentially, you know, let me erase all this. We got the F distribution, right? Looks like this. And then, uh, you know, I don't know, one's like, let's say one is like right here. Here's one, right, roughly. Remember, it starts at zero. Because we're working with variances, you can't have a negative variance. <clears throat> so our test statistics, by always, by always forcing the top to be the greater, when we divide, we get a number greater than one. So our test statistic can land anywhere 
on this part of the chart after one. If we flipped it around and you divided, you would always get a number less than one, but bigger than zero. So that means every single thing would have had to squeeze into this little gap here, which makes it really hard to be accurate and doesn't give us much wiggle room uh, to work with hypothesis tests and, and all that. Uh, so that's kind of the idea, one reason, not all the reasons, but one reason why we wanted to definitely divide it in that way. Uh, it gives us more ability to work with this yellow region in terms of determining whether to reject or fail to reject. All right. So there it is. Let's jump right into it. So we've got a restaurant manager. Uh, they're designing a new system intended to decrease the variance of time customers wait before their meals are served. Under the old system, a random sample of 10 customers had a variance of 400. Under the new system, uh, a random sample of 21 customers had a variance of 256. At alpha equals 0 0.10, is there enough evidence to convince the manager to switch to the new system? So first of all, 400 is bigger than 256, um, and so 400 is a larger. So the variance of 400 is going to be group 1, and then therefore the 256 will be group 2. And where did the 400 come from? The 400 came from the old system. So the old system is group 1. The new system is group 2. All right. Uh, so old, new, right? And we're hoping the variance for the new system is smaller, right? Takes less time, less variation anyways. Uh, less variation, more consistent, let's say. Uh, and so that would be our claim, and that's a greater than problem, and so that is going to go in the null hypothesis, and that's our claim. And here I have everything worked out, um, but we'll, uh, I'll run through it and show you real quick. But uh, summarizing the stats, right, this is the old system, this is the new system, all right. Uh, there they are. Now, degrees of freedom sub n. Now, why the n and why the d? n for numerator, because group 1 value, its value goes in the numerator or the top of the fraction, right? And uh, group 2, why, um, yeah, let's do purple, why not? Uh, why d? d for denominator, because that is the bottom of the fraction, so that's why it's a sub n and a sub d referring to the numerator and denominator but anyhow you don't even need stat crunch to do the uh, test statistic 400 divided by 256 is 1.536 so that's your test statistic um, let's look up our critical values though alpha was 0 0.10 so uh, look let's look up that so let's jump into stat crunch stat calculators F distribution okay and degrees of freedom from the numerator uh, the sample size for the numerator was 9 so 9 minus 1 is 8 denominator uh, that had a sample size of 20 so 20 minus 1 is 19 uh, I need to go to the right and alpha was I believe it was 10 whoops not two dots there we go so our critical value is, uh, looks like 2.017. So if I uh, go back, uh, it's 2.017. That's where that uh, region starts. Now, what was my um, test statistic? It was 1.53. So remember, this is 0. So where's 1.53? Yeah, I don't know, like right here. So we are not in the rejection region. Now, if I go into stat crunch, uh, it tells me the p-value. All right, f stat was 1.5625, which we rounded to 1.563. Um, and uh, where do you go in stat crunch? We go to stats, uh, variance stats, right? Two sample. We're doing a variance, and there's your inputs. Um, in by the way, if these two are equal, which you assume, then when you divide two things that are equal, 
you get one. So that's why, if you can see it here, that's why there's a one in here. We're going to always leave that as a one. All right. So I'll, I'll run through the next example and use stat crunch. But anyhow, the point being, uh, P is 0.1939, alpha was 10. Uh, this is greater. If the P is low, the null has got to go. But the P is not low. P is greater than alpha. So we're going to fail to reject. And if I fail to reject the null, I think the null is OK. Ooh, if I think the null is OK, uh, looks like I'm not going to support the claim. So there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Uh, that the variance for the new system is less than the old system. So in other words, what are we going to decide here? Uh, we're going to decide not to switch to the new system. All right, and uh, there you have it. Um, now, a, a large restaurant chain would probably do something like this in real life. They might create a new system, and then they put it in one restaurant to test it out. And uh, then they'll gather data from one restaurant using the new system, use uh, some of your, the other uh, restaurants for the old system, um, compare them, right, uh, and uh, see what's happening here. And then this would tell them, hey, this doesn't seem to work. So we should not scale this up and put this in all the, rest, all the restaurants we own. So it would not be a good idea. Uh, just one example maybe how this might work. All right, let's do this one, and uh, I'll show you how to do it in StatCrunch. Uh, so an employment information service claims that the standard deviation, standard deviation of annual salaries for actuaries is greater in New York than in California. Um, you select a sample of actuaries from each state, results of which are shown below. Alpha equals 0.05. Can you support the claim? Assume both populations are normally distributed. All right, <clears throat> now which sample has the larger variance? So it looks like, um, looks like this has the larger standard deviation, and therefore it's going to have a larger variance. So we're going to call New York group one, California is group two. So just double check that. Uh, and so let's bring it over. Uh, what are we hypothesizing? Uh, we want to test the claim that um, annual sales for actuaries is greater in New York. Uh, so we want to test that New York is greater than California. Right? Now they actually tell us to test standard deviations. Um, but we're going to use StatCrunch, so StatCrunch uses variances. So I'm going to test sigma 1 squared greater than sigma 2 squared. Sigma 1 squared, therefore, less than or equal to sigma 2 squared. And this was my claim here in the alternative. Greater than, so by the way, that means what? That means we're over here somewhere. And alpha was, I think, 10. No, nope, it was 0.05. Go figure. So first of all, uh, well, no, let's not uh, get too ahead of ourselves. N1 is 41. N2 is 61. Whoops. 41, 61. And so degrees of freedom from the numerator is N1 minus 1. Denominator n2 minus 1. Okay. Now, s1 squared, because we are using stat crunch and stat crunch wants to use variances. And so if I go back, uh, these are going to be some big numbers 39,700, uh, let's see here, 39,700 squared and uh, 29,000 squared. So some big numbers here. So one, five, seven, six, nine, uh, oops, six, zero, nine, one, two, three, four. So let's see here. 
That would be one billion five hundred seventy-six million ninety thousand. Uh, and then this one is eight four one zero 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 zero. All right. So let's do this this one in Stat Crunch. So if I go into Stat Crunch, um, first of all, let's get my critical value. Uh, so degrees of freedom was forty, and this one was sixty and 0.05 so 1.594 so I'll write that on my sheet 1.594 that's the critical value and then now let's do uh, stats variant stats two samples and I have a summary and so the variance for sample one, that's that one, large massive number one, five, seven, six, zero, nine, zero, 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 zero. Sample size, 41. Eight, four, one, zero, 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 zero. Sample size, 61. And our alternative is greater than, and again, we're going to leave this to one because, again, uh, the null essentially says, hey, they're equal, and if they're equal, when you divide them, you get one. So we'll just leave it like that. We'll hit compute, and uh, there is my F statistic, which really, we didn't need stat crunch to do that because we're just dividing the two values anyways. Um, but the F statistic is 1.874. And my p-value is 0.0135. So if I come back, um, how does p compare to alpha? Alpha is 0.05. Um, that is definitely less than. And furthermore, um, 1.874. Well, the critical value was at 1.5, 1.8. You know, somewhere's out here. So we are in the rejection region. The P is low, the null has got to go. So we are going to reject the null. So if I reject the null, nope, and aha, so therefore I am supporting the claim. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim uh, that the standard deviation well, in this case, variances, but if the variances are greater, then the standard deviations are greater. And remember, the original problem did ask about standard deviations. So I would say uh, that the standard deviation for New York is greater than that of California. So there you have it. Uh, that is uh, two variances uh, working with StatCrunch uh, and everything else. And uh, hope that helps out.